Or maybe deep, thin, and if they are thin and you needed one, maybe you do need to ensure that, you know, through free agency. So that's the, the part of the process we're in is, is, is matching our draft board with the free agent board, being realistic where you may be able to pick players and if you don't pick them at 50, who might still be available in the third round and that gets a lot harder. Does your draft approach change at all since you don't pick until later in the second round? Are you looking at guys who might be more boom or bust, might be able to you take a chance on who could help your team a little bit more, whereas maybe you wouldn't if you had either an earlier pick or just more picks in general? Uh, I, it does change. There will be some players that we ultimately will not really spend a lot more time vetting or evaluating because you got a gut feeling they're not getting to 50. What you didn't do have to, what you have to do then is the realistic players uh, really start uh, spending your time vetting them. A good question on boom or bust when you have less uh, draft picks you you have to run that equation of do you just get a solid sound pick because you have less picks in the mutual fund so it's probably better to go just solid sound but you can always be tempted if someone fail that is more boom or bust probably because you're saying he's got some element of better skills than where you would be picking them but something <laughs> caused him to fall but that becomes a volatile volatile investment that you got away is that just another element of like you were saying before going to the draft making sure that you put yourself in the right situation to either if you need to be more aggressive you can or kind of what have whatever strategy you might need to definitely and what what, what we found is uh and we've done in the last few years is is trying to accumulate as many picks and probably let's just call it simple top 100 maybe sure. first three rounds so We've, t we've traditionally said it might be better. Uh, the math would say better to trade back, collect as many picks in the second, third round. So you may have four picks in the second, third round a little bit later instead of just two. And then, you know, that's traditionally. But I, we've also in the past been pretty aggressive and, you know, gone from 15 or 16 to one to right. pick a quarterback. Probably depends on the year. Unless if you look at uh, Cooper Cup's trajectory and uh, okay. Some of the uh, other young receivers in the league. You feel like that's a position where guys are coming out of college ready to make an impact sooner than maybe they have in the past. It there is a lot more receivers coming into the draft because there's just a lot more receivers in college football and high school football. A lot of teams running three, four, five wides. Uh, so it probably depends on uh, where the player is from, how he's developed. But I do. It's probably a harder transition from receiver in college to the NFL because the route combinations and depth and things like that are a lot different. So it probably depends on, on the human, but there is a lot of talented skill coming into the league, and, and that position this year has been fun to evaluate in the draft. There's, there's some really fun players at that position this year's draft. Hey, Les, it was a tough year for Brandon Cooks. I was wondering your expectations for him coming into this season. The, uh, well, the, for his sake, for us, right, you, I mean, you always want players to, let's call it, catch more balls or have more yards. The one element that I think uh, Brandon doesn't get credit for is he can really run. He can stretch uh, the defense vertically. So when you have a player like that, it does basically create more space in the coverage shells that could uh, allow for openings you know, underneath, intermediate, things like that. And when you don't have a player uh, with that type of speed to threaten, you know, defenses will traditionally go, uh-oh, they, they can't really get it down the field. So they start, they start, you know, making things tighter. So the, the openings underneath, intermediate, will get a little bit tougher. So I think with, with each player, they bring a skill set uh, that can help the, the other combination of players on the field, and I think that's what Brandon does, take catches and yards out of the mix. It doesn't help fantasy football, no, it but it does help the Los Angeles Rams. Well, that's what you're concerned about. Yes. <laughs> I've been traditionally horrible at fantasy football. Well, that's one of those one of the things your receivers have been praised for, is their you know, not, not only ability to do it, but their want ability to block yeah. Yeah. in the run game and everything. How do you evaluate that here? or maybe in the college, do you see that as much in college, or is that maybe just an attitude you know a guy will have that he'll be able to do that with you guys once he gets there? The, uh, 
it's definitely an intangible. In college, you can, obviously you can cut up every time a, a player's maybe at the point of attack in the run game. You get a little bit more with some of the, the bubble action with receivers having to, to block. Rarely, we've got a, a very unique group of rare intangibles that you can <laughs> – you know, show them the offense staff and getting 11 personnel and actually tighten it up and, and those guys, you know, uh, block like fullbacks. I don't know if uh, that, that just takes a rare unique. So I give our guys credit uh, for being able to do that. But you can you can do some some deep dives in college football to try to figure out and see them actually block. Probably a lot different. Probably don't see them blocking defensive ends and things like that, like we've asked our guys to do at times. But sure. There's ways you can find it out. What are some of the positions in this draft class that get you really excited? You, you talked about it, having a lot of sweet spots, some of these positions being deeper than others. I mean, where do you really see uh, this class kind of changing or shaping the league over the next couple But it, On the surface, and again, it's very deep at the, the wide receiver position. That's just, I think you're going to hear that here. They're going to run fast. They're going to they're gonna play well. Uh, so uh, that one's good. I'd, I've had fun watching them. A, a lot of those players will not be around at, at 50, but it has been interesting because we do have a relatively deep wide receiver class. You do when you are picking 50 because of the depth of that position. Go, okay, there might be one, two, three players that would be worthy of that pick at 50 that could help any football team and would be would we be willing to go there or not. You have to work through things like that, weighing that in that position. Uh, the receiver position is one of our strengths, but do you pass up on a really good player? Because they, they get pushed down based on depth. But How much do you watch some of the top guys, like even if you know probably not going to have a chance to take him, you just talked about a little bit it's, there. Just It's when you're grinding on the guys that you're realistically going to be able to get, and then maybe you're getting a little sleepy and you go, okay, I want to go put on one of these guys. <laughs> and, and then go, wow, did you, you know, that's – it is, it is fun doing that, and, and by now you can remember. I don't have the memory like Sean, but you can remember exactly when, when let's call it, Ruggs at Alabama is going to go make this unbelievable block versus Ole Miss, and, and, and they're going to score. But it had nothing to do with him being able to run fast, catch the ball. It was, did you see that receiver go do that? So you, you have fun doing that. You guys, I mean, you just emphasized the importance of stretching the field and creating layers underneath and Keeping defenses accountable. The, the defense is always going, even if it's a low probability, the defense can't just say, okay, we're, we're ignoring that. Because then becomes probably a little bit higher probability uh, to making that play. So I, I think I think when you're all, we're going to always want someone who can stretch the field vertically so that we do know you're, you're limited, you become a little handicapped from the design of the plays when you don't, when you can't keep the defense. Honest. And what can that, sorry to, to clarify, what can that player do to create a higher probability in that situation when they're getting sent downfield? The, the, uh, the, well, the ultimately get open, ultimately be able to track the ball, ultimately be able to be maybe make a contested catch, ultimately, depending on the game uh, and the situation, do you want to, uh, let's call it, take a, a 50 50 ball, or would you rather take a a 70-30 shot. So that all of those things, there's so many variables that, that come into it. Now, you were talking about the wide receiver class, how good it is. How many first-rounders do you think uh, could be wide receivers? I remember thinking that number. Off the top of my head, I, yeah. I was trying to think if it breaks the, uh, what was the draft where yeah, Sammy and all of those right. guys started with Sammy and then it went probably all the way to Brandon Cooks. Yeah. I, I think my prediction was this draft beats that draft in first rounders, but I don't know the exact number. But yeah. I remember doing that in the draft room probably sometime in November. Yeah. Mike Mayock thought there'd be like 20 wide receivers in the first four rounds. Oh, you said first four rounds. Then. Well, the first round. My original saying, question. Mike's a lot round. better than me when he can do <laughs> four rounds. But. Yeah, right, right. But does that sound right? I mean, 20 for four rounds. That, that could five around. That seems like I'm going to go under. <laughs> okay. 